Today, we're returning to the rehearsal room and learning an important and easy exercise that is meant to make your rehearsals more productive and your performances more immersive. Let's talk about crossing the threshold. Hi, the Inspired Actor here. If you're new to this channel, we are dedicated to helping actors become better artists through quick lessons like these and other videos about theater, film, and the actor's life. If you want to see more videos like these, go ahead and subscribe and don't forget to hit that like button and share this video with your colleagues. Thanks a lot. What is a threshold? Historically, a threshold was the place where someone entering a house would stamp their feet to get rid of the dirt, mud, or snow on one's shoes. People's homes were generally one room, and tracking mud into the house would have made life miserable for everybody. Today, the word threshold has come to mean not only a door sill, but also a boundary from one place to another. A gate, a doorway, an entryway. It not only means a boundary from one space to another, but it can also signify a beginning point of a place in time, like crossing the threshold into a new age. Finally, it can mean any point where a physiological or psychological effect can be produced. For example, one's threshold for pain or affection. In our work as actors, all of these definitions can be deeply meaningful. We all have these things called lives outside the rehearsal room, theater, or set. Acting can be deeply personal. And if we are not careful, we can mix our real life with the artistic lives of our characters in ways that can be unhealthy and unproductive. Think of a painter who is preparing to do their work. The painter must prep his space and himself for work prior to beginning, or else they risk getting paint on their clothing, the floor, the walls, and other things that they might need to keep clean and paint-free in their regular lives. Painters tend to have work clothes specifically for their work. They may lay down a tarp so that they don't get paint on things they don't want. They prep the canvas and use brushes that have been cleaned and are ready to use. When the painter is finished for the day, they must change their clothes, wash the paint off themselves and their utensils, and make sure that they are not tracking the paint into other rooms. Ask any painter, and they will say that this is a necessary part of the work. Acting is similar to painting in this regard. Our body is the canvas. I have to take care of the canvas because it is the foundation on which an actor's art rests. The texts we use are the brushes. The brush may be refined and delicate like Shakespeare or broad and wide like comedic farce. The paints an actor uses are our feelings and psychology. If we are not careful, we can track our paint in and out of our artistic lives, which can negatively affect our work. If I am angry at my parents, for example, and I track that anger into my rehearsal for the balcony scene in Romeo and Juliet, it will certainly impact my choices and may lead me astray, causing me to make choices that are inappropriate for the scene. Even if my character's emotional life and my own correlate, it may still lead me astray as the intensity I feel in one may differ from the intensity I feel in the other, and suddenly I am not living truthfully in the world of the play or movie, but simply rehashing the day's events in a way that is not productive either artistically or personally. For the actor, it is best to have a clear delineation between the world of the play or movie and our personal lives. The focus of our work should be the imagined world of the character, not our real-life issues and personalities. Chekhov felt that it was a crime to limit the actor within the limits of their personality. He compared that kind of acting with being an enslaved laborer rather than an artist, always at the command of our own ego rather than being free to live fully as our character. Crossing the threshold into the world of the character is a kind of ritualized activity that preps the mind, body, and imagination for that day's work. When you cross the threshold as a group at the beginning of each rehearsal, you build a sense of ensemble and connectedness that can boost your work in amazing ways. When crossing the threshold as an individual, you increase your powers of concentration and imagination and prime your body and mind for the work at hand. The most important value of crossing the threshold, in my view, is that it helps enhance the feeling that the space is both safe and sacred. We as artists are quite prone to self-judgment and criticism. 
We can be so afraid of making a wrong choice in rehearsal or performance that we keep ourselves from making strong and committed choices or sometimes any choices at all. We want to leave that fear of judgment from both our peers and ourselves behind and live completely truthfully in the imagined circumstances of the play or movie. I began the practice of crossing the threshold immediately in my very first class, and many of my students look at me like I'm crazy. This can be a foreign concept to many people, and what I say is this. One, we are beginning by imagining something is there that is not actually there. Imagination is the foundation of the actor's work. Actors imagine things are true that are not true all the time. Whether it's an imagined relationship, a fourth wall, or the absence of a camera, actors must learn to focus and concentrate their imagination usefully. Two. One of the things we do very naturally as artists is to criticize ourselves and others. We are quite good at it, in fact. But as artists, this tends to hamper our creative freedom and individuality. We can't worry about that while trying to better ourselves as artists, so this exercise is intended to ritualize an atmosphere conducive to our work. Three. After a surprisingly short time, you will come to depend on crossing the threshold in your acting. And it's true. The crazy looks disappear over a surprisingly short period of time, and my cast or class almost always remind me if I forget to do the threshold exercise at the beginning of our session. On the occasion that we all forget, they mention that something felt off for them. Doing some version of the threshold exercise really helps to prime the space and the actor for their best work. I'm not sure if I can totally explain it fully, except that ritualizing and physicalizing a threshold activity just plain works. It builds our capacity for imagination and concentration. Chekhov felt that art wasn't really possible without concentration, and that a refined creative imagination is the basis point for any actor. So I'm going to go through a group threshold exercise and an individual threshold exercise. At the time I am making this video, I realized that the group activity is not really possible. I am positive that it will be possible again at some point in the future, and I recommend this activity as a wonderful opening activity for your first rehearsal back. In any case, if you are a teacher or director, do not be afraid of doing this activity with your class or cast at the beginning of every session. If you are a director, try to include the stage manager and any other crew as well. First. Gather your students or cast and ask them to form a large circle. You need to make clear that they need to try to form a perfect circle as much as they are able. This is to emphasize to the students the importance of form in their work. For the first several classes or rehearsals, I say the following. I don't think it's necessary to say this in its entirety after the first few times, but it's fun to revisit every few weeks or so to remind the actors of the imagery. Now, before we begin, I'd like you all just to take a look at everyone's face around the circle and acknowledge them. Don't say anything yet. Just acknowledge them with your eyes or non-verbally and thank them non-verbally for being a part of this ensemble with you today. Good. Now, I invite you to open up your ideal artistic center, which is right here, and make sure that this part of you is alive and ready to radiate and receive throughout the session today. And now I invite you to look up. And I'd like you to look past the ceiling and past the roof and past the sky and past the clouds and past the atmosphere and past the moon and past Mars and past Venus and past Pluto and the asteroid belt and the very edges of our solar system. And now I'd like you to look past all the myriad galaxies and nebula between us and the very center of the universe. And right there, at the center of the universe, you should be able to see a golden speck of light. Really focus on this golden light and notice 
that it's starting to move towards us. And it's moving faster and faster now, faster than the speed of imagination, past all those galaxies and all those nebula, and past the borders of our solar system, and past the asteroid belt, and past Jupiter, and past Pluto, and past Mars and Venus, and now it's right at the edge of our atmosphere, and, and now it's going through the sky, past the clouds, through our roof, through the ceiling, and now it's hovering just over our heads. And if you'll notice, it's at the exact same diameter as the circle, the perfect circle we've made here today. And you see that this is a golden curtain of light forming a ring at the exact same diameter of our group. And it needs a little help to the floor, so we have to help it. But we have to help it as an ensemble. So I'd like everyone in unison to reach up and bring it down together. And now we're slowly bringing it down, down, down to the floor all together. And now we're going to let it fall to the floor. And oh, there it goes through the floor and through the crust and through the core of the earth and pass through China, through the sky, past the clouds, past the moon, past Venus, past Mars, past all those myriad galaxies. And because the universe is the way the universe is, it is also connected to the center of the universe. And we see in front of us now this golden curtain of light. We can touch it. It should feel warm to our touch. should feel nice and warm to our touch and we can reach through it like we're reaching into a waterfall but this is a waterfall of light and it's cascading over our arm and it should feel warm and this hand should feel different than this hand and maybe we reach both of our hands into the light maybe we wash our hands in this light and it should feel great and when you are ready I'd like you to step through this curtain of light and let it cascade all over you, past into your face and into your chest and into your body. And you can rub it into your skin and it should feel great. And notice how we all look in this golden radiating light. And now I invite you, when you are ready, to turn around and pull this ring to the borders of our space. And if you can't go any further, if you're blocked in some way by some object, radiate this light out through your ideal artistic center and radiate it to the borders of our space. And when you're ready, turn around. The space should feel different, doesn't it? Good. Now we're ready to begin. Again, as you continue to do this for each class, the need for you to narrate should become less and less. The important thing is that the movements remain relatively the same. You can speed this up if you deem necessary to cover the material you intend for that day's session. Sometimes I take five minutes with this exercise and sometimes this exercise can only take a few seconds. Remember, it is the ritual of activity that will automatically prep the actor for the day's work. At the end of the class, I say this. Now we are at the end of our class, and I invite you to form a circle once again, and I'd like you to pull through your ideal artistic center, through your backspace, all of the golden ring that was left on the borders of our space back into this ring we have just formed, this circle. And we are reforming the light so that we can send it back. And when you are ready, I'd like you to reach down, pick up the golden ring. Oh, it should feel heavier now. And let's send it back to the world of inspiration, the world of creative individuality. Whew. See you guys later. The class in unison lifts the ring and gives it one final toss to the sky. This ensures that each class ends in an expansion. Now, let's go over an exercise you as an individual can do to cross the threshold. Wherever you need to, someplace to the side of the room or off stage, imagine that there is a door in front of you. 
Imagine that this door is the entryway into the world of your character. Make it as specific to the world of the play or movie as possible. Sometimes it may be a large wooden door, sometimes a sliding door, sometimes the door of a cage, but whatever comes to mind, do not judge it and try to visualize it as clearly as possible. Know that when you open that door and step through it, that you will be in the world of the character, a safe space where you are free to perform without judgment of yourself or others. When you are ready, open the door, step through, and close the door behind you. When you are finished working or taking a break, don't forget to step back through the door into the real world and close the door behind you. It's important that you always keep a clear delineation between your world and the character's world. And that's it. Two exercises designed to improve your concentration, imagination, feeling of the whole, feeling of beauty, feeling of ease, feeling of form, sense of atmosphere, as well as much, much more. As you continue to work with this, you may find that doing this right before an audition has a calming and focusing effect. You can use this in many aspects of your daily and creative life. And I have found this really works for me and the people I work with. One more thing. I have used this exercise with all levels and age groups. If you believe in the ring, your students will too. Hope it works for you too. Let me know what you think in the comments and I'll see you guys later.